Ollante Tabo, probably one of the most visually perplexing sites within Peru, claimed to be that of the Incas and at an altitude of 2,792 meters above sea level. Once one takes a good look at this place, it becomes near impossible to believe that the Incan civilization, with their access to such limited technologies, could have created such a place. During the Inca Empire, Ollante Tabo was the royal estate of Emperor Pacacuti. According to academia, when he conquered the region, he built the town and the ceremonial center within. It is such an impressive, perfectly placed strategic structure that, at the time of the Spanish conquest, it served as a stronghold for Manco Inco Yupanqui, leader of the Inca resistance. However, as mentioned many times on our channel, how could a civilization create such astonishing architecture at such an early time within known history? How did they create some of these sites? What purpose could they have served? Some of the ruins that can be found in Peru, and in particular Ollante Tambo, you cannot help but wonder if, for example, the giant stairs carved into the hillside were intended for human use then why create them to such enormous scales? According to the history books, around the mid-15th century, the Incan emperor Pacacuti conquered Ollantaytambo, including the surrounding region. All were incorporated into his personal estate. The emperor then claims to have rebuilt the town with sumptuous constructions and undertook extensive harassing and masterfully irrigating the Urubamba Valley notably without any prior knowledge of these techniques known of. Were these giant ledge steps once used by giants? Or possibly, had a use similar to the ancient site known as Moray? Moray also claimed to be Incan. This mind-boggling site had an astonishing purpose. It seems the builders of this enormous structure were masters of horticulture. They had somehow figured out that by creating these raised ledges at particular angles to the seasonal winds and sun, using this to slowly acclimatize plants previously not suitable to that climate over many generations. Perhaps this is what Oliente Tambo was used for. Moray is little shared by academia. Indeed, its existence and one's function is difficult to explain with modern paradigms. And although not giants, we feel the site's once use was no less impressive. Olante Tambo, within Peru, is undoubtedly one of the most incredible ruins to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many people have been mystified by the site's characteristics, some even suggesting that its shelf-like construction was once created as steps for giants, its real original use, however, being no less remarkable. The so-called pre-Incas responsible for its original build did so with the intention of utilizing these layers of soil to slowly acclimatize plants that were once not used to a certain altitude through a process of selective breeding, eventually taking them far higher than they were ever found before, making it possible to cultivate said herbs, fruits, or vegetables within their high-altitude sanctuaries, once virtually impenetrable fortresses so that with these newly adjusted phenotypes of plants, and with the aid of what is the subject of this video, could stay high in the mountains virtually indefinitely, self-sustained thanks to the incredible achievements of Olen Tetabo. The Inkamasana Water Temple being the final piece of this now lost people's armory, for although the horticultural knowledge displayed by this lost civilization is evidence of advanced culture, their abilities to control the path of water is another of the pieces of evidence which not only proves that this people were highly capable, but were also unquestionably advanced in their execution of said feats. For although these irrigation systems or drinking water inflows are many thousands of years old, most still work to this day. Some of these water features were so well made that even modern re-inhabitors still use several of these systems as they even rival that of the modern system which would replace it, bringing water to the locations. Dr. Richard Mixod, who studied the water sources of Incamasana in Oletantabo, led a team of researchers from the University of Virginia, known as the Wright Water Engineers, 
from the Wright Paleo Hydrological Institute and archaeologists Armenda Gabaja Oviedo and Dr. Gordon McCowan, all of whom conducted reverse engineering in an attempt to back engineer the remarkable achievements seen at the Water Temple. Located north of the Manuraki Canal in the sacred valley of the Incas, at an altitude of 3,000 meters, this sophisticated water complex consists of rooms, open spaces, beautiful complex pools, ornamental fountains, waterfalls, and buried channels. These pre-Incan accomplishments display an intimate knowledge of so-called modern hydraulic principles, even building their channels in such a way as to avoid hydraulic jumps. The Water Temple's architecture and hydraulic works define Incamasana as a high-status sanctuary for worship of water. Intricate and carefully executed cliff carvings parallel to the Water Temple add a mystical dimension to the temple's original purpose, which is currently claimed to have been the worship of water. Ancient roads also left by this same elusive group unquestionably tie Olente Tabo and the Water Temple to this once great, now lost civilization's empire. Who built the Incamisana Water Temple? How did they build it? Why is the polygonal masonry, something which ancient Peru is synonymous with, found at many of the world's ancient relics? Who were these ancient people? Where did they go? It is undoubtedly an incredible place, one which we find highly compelling. Although school curriculums, historical publishings, permitted TV documentaries, and even national museums all conform to a dreary, limited historical tale in which modern archaeology dictates all, we feel evidence to suggest that a lost civilization once lived, flourished, and built incredible as yet unexplained structures all over our planet is now overwhelming. We have endeavored to explore, unravel, and describe to the world this unimaginably enormous array of impressive, incredibly ancient feats of stone building. By doing so, we feel we have demonstrated that not only is academia severely lacking any explanation or even permitted study of these features, but that this lost civilization, before their mysterious disappearance, we're clearly far in advance of our own current architectural, agricultural, and even technological knowledge. And while the world has begun to awaken to the reality of this group's past existence, we have been busy attempting to uncover just what they were building, who they could have been, and why they were clearly infatuated with the stars. It should be clear to anyone who has explored these unexplained ancient structures that a common reoccurrence among all is the inclusion of constellations. Whether that be within the alignment of said builds, or indeed etched into the architecture itself. Why would a clearly highly advanced past civilization have been so obsessed with the stars? If one ponders this question, Without the clouded, primitive belief-based explanations and motives academia puts forward, it is a question that becomes highly compelling. In Kiori Concha, Cusco, the golden star disk once rested, once part of a large star map, although funded scholars have seemingly been unable to describe its obvious depictions, many individual researchers have conveniently deciphered this disk with ease. The Golden Star Map, according to an Incan elder, is a map of the sky where their ancestors and Viracocha came from. It has been investigated by academics for over the last 70 years, although this research bared little fruit. Its detail was masterfully produced on one enormous hammered gold sheet, and is believed to have been a mere piece of a map once far larger. How did this ancient people know so much about the stars and the universe around us? Why were they so obsessed with stars? Were the Incas visited by beings from space? Perhaps one day we will find out. Sacsayhuaman, meaning Royal Eagle, is a fortress temple complex which lies at the northern edge of the once great Incan capital of Peru, still known today as Cusco. 
apparently constructed during the reign of Pakakuti between 1438 and 1471 AD. According to academia, its massive, well-built walls remain a testimony not only to Incan power, but also to their skills of architecture and their approach of blending their monumental structures harmoniously with the natural landscape. The Saxa-Hurman site was so well-built, in fact, it is still used today for reenactments of Inca-inspired ceremonies. With some of the biggest blocks to be found within ancient ruins anywhere on Earth, it's important to remember just how these ancient civilizations managed to move these stones, having never actually thought to record such techniques within engravings or writings of any kind, remains a mystery. Blocks many tons in weight placed together with such precision, no mortar was ever used, yet the site remains intact, like a giant's dry stone wall, enormous random-shaped stones were apparently effortlessly stacked neatly together, or one on top of another, forming the amazing walls we see today. Who built saxa Heuermann? Was it really the Incas? If so, how did they manage it? Like all other ancient sites upon Earth, archaeological finds are one of the main driving factors behind dating such relics. These investigations will often look for specific artifact types these objects, known to have places within studied history, are often used to establish a date given. This by no way means that the date is accurate, or indeed the artifacts from a far different type of culture, from a very different time in history, are not missed, or more often than not, ignored. The giant blocks interlocked and sloped to maximize their resistance to earthquake damage, a construction feature somehow understood over 500 years ago. Time has proved its efficiency. Earthquakes have done remarkably little damage to the structures in Peru over the years, many still in their apparently abandoned state, and the saxa Heuermann is no exception. Did the Incas really build saxa Heuermann, Machu Picchu, etc.? Or, like we have postulated regarding the Great Sphinx and the Giza Plateau, was the Incan Empire a mere re-inhabitation of an extraordinarily well-built ancient ruin? left by a far more advanced, yet far more ancient civilization. Perhaps one day, Peru will reveal its ancient secret. One of our personal favorite ancient sites is the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. We believe this site was built an unimaginably long time ago, yet it would still be a daunting proposition for any invading party. One of the most impressive features of the site and the reason why it is ranked as one of our favorites is the inexplicably baffling stonework that makes up the fortress's maze of outer walls. Created without the use of mortar and encompassing some of the most astonishing ancient stonework we feel to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many other sites within Peru undoubtedly contain incredibly precise stonework, Sacsayhuaman is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the evidence for a lost advanced civilization. The largest stones in this boundary being 28 feet high, regularly academically estimated to weigh over 120 tons, with more enthusiastic estimates placing the largest stones at around the 300 to 400 ton mark. Located on the outskirts of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it rests on an enormous artificially leveled plateau. It consists of three outer barriers, gargantuan walls, 1,500 feet long and 54 feet wide, created in a strategic zigzag shape. They surround a paved area containing a mysterious circular structure. As recently mentioned in another video, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest two phases of building was undertaken at certain sites within Peru. We feel that the constructors of Sacsayhuaman are the same people who indeed built most of ancient Peru. This group were the ones who utilized the enigmatic protuberances even found upon the casing stones on the Great Pyramids. However, interestingly, there was another, later phase, and although not as complex, still far more advanced than any academically studied ancestor who are currently claimed as the actual builders. This means that more than one ancient civilization must have called ancient Peru home. A later group re-inhabiting these sites, flourishing to a point where they were clearly inspired by the site's original builders, 
becoming highly capable stone builders themselves. How old is Sacsayhuaman? Who could have possibly built it? And why did they not utilize the mysterious protuberances found on much of their other stonework throughout Peru? It is, undoubtedly, one of the most incredible ancient sites still standing on our planet. And thanks to the incredible capabilities of its builders, it will remain standing for many more years to come. It is a site filled with inexplicable features, which we find incredibly compelling. The Great Pyramids of Giza – undoubtedly some of the most incredible ancient monuments to be found anywhere on Earth. Just how old are these structures? 4,000 years? 10,000 years? 100,000 years? We recently uncovered the astonishing megalithic blocks once exposed upon the east side of Cheops. Blocks which indicate that the entire skeletal structure of the pyramid is actually made with blocks similar to those found at Baalbek. 100 plus ton blocks, revealed at some point within antiquity, most likely done by a jealous ruler in an attempt to destroy and conceal the evidence of this past, more capable civilizations were. Additionally, humans are curious creatures. Not only do we now suspect that destructive phases have befallen the great structure throughout its long life on Earth, but also, like we do today, has also before experienced being marveled at, and conservation efforts in the form of more modern casting stones have been installed, these blocks initially obstructing our view of the seemingly impossible blocks which make up its inner structure. Is there any proof to support such claims of an enormous age to be found anywhere else on Earth? Peru, a place which contains the same uncannily designed impossible pre-Incan architecture. Within the Supi Valley, some 120 miles north of Lima, is the Pyramid of Caral. Now claimed to be the oldest pyramid on Earth, and the clear erosion which it has experienced clearly makes it an obvious candidate for this title of incredible antiquity, once towering into the heavens, now virtually leveled by erosion over many, many millennia. This site has clearly received no later attention by a capable or interested civilization, left to rot with the overgrown mountains of Peru. Yet it possesses such similarities in architecture with ancient Mesopotamia, China, India, and indeed Egypt, is it now so unforgivable to suspect that all of these structures were actually built by the same civilization at the same time within history? The only difference being that the well-known and documented Egyptian civilization later moved in on the specific pyramidal structures of Giza for power purposes, while the Inca focused in on the ancient architectural land terracing. Interestingly, and yet more compelling, evidence supports previous hypotheses here on the channel. When Paul Kosak discovered Corral in 1948, it received little attention because it appeared to lack any historical artifacts, an unusual absence of any habitational evidence usually sought at archaeological sites. Could this be due to the sheer age of these monuments? that all but the remaining gigantic stones has simply eroded away? Corral is not the only pyramid to be found within Peru. There are many more which share the same evidence of great age. Near the city of Saipan is the largest pyramid concentration in Southern America, known as the Pyramids of Tucumi, or the Valley of the Pyramids. It has no less than three pyramid cities which together have a stunning total of 250 pyramids. Tucumi lies on the southern margin of the valley and is surrounded by fertile agricultural land, thanks to the Tami Canal, which brings water northwards from the Chanque River, a perfect strategic location for a once flourishing civilization. Who were these people? When did they live? Thanks to ongoing research, not only is the officially upheld story surrounding such cities crumbling, but we are now getting closer and closer to finally answering these questions. Kulap, 
a site that I have previously covered and also personally exposed the true scale of. Seemingly, or more than likely deliberately overlooked by academia, Kulap not only possesses an enormous ancient wall, which surrounds the entrance to the site, which according to academia, was seemingly placed upon the plateau of a naturally formed hill. However, after personally investigating this site myself, I found that not only had the wall constructed took unimaginable effort to build, but that the site beyond this impenetrable fortress had in fact been backfilled with earth, artificially creating the plateau that geologists, academics, and archaeologists alike long ignored and merely assumed was selected due to natural features, were in fact artificially created. However, it is clear for all to see that not only was the plateau painstakingly created to backfill to this fortress's wall, but the ingenious entrances were also the work of a people of tremendous intellect. Many of the passageways into the site allow many to enter the passages. However, as the invaders made their way along these elevations to penetrate the fortress itself, not only were they wide open to arrow fire from above from both sides, but also by design, the passageways slowly narrowed to a point where only one person at a time could actually enter the site. However, the purpose of this video is not the astonishing architectural features of the site itself but possibly an exposure of the true creators of the site. A group of people with characteristics which may come as a shock to some and been long predicted by others. Found deep within a cave system within the site, a burial chamber at the depth of 800 meters, a burial chamber created at this location for the sole purpose of preserving these individuals' remains for as long as possible and also to avoid the ravages tomb raiders that have been experienced over the eons by many of the other burial sites by many different cultures. There are many wooden idols that have seemingly been treated with lost technologies and have survived the climate astonishingly well. Yet, this set of mummies could expose once and for all who were responsible for this astonishing site and indeed its miraculous characteristics. Thankfully, Although much of the ancient tombs had been ravaged by robbers over the years, this absence of mummies didn't deter archaeologist Warren Church, who's worked for 19 years to save lost Pachudos and learn its secrets. Seemingly successfully unraveling its innermost protected secrets, and possibly coming face to face with its original builders, they were known as the Chachapoya, or the Cloud People by the Incas who by this stage had re-inhabited the ancient pre-Incan ruins which dot Peru, and due to the ingenious nature of the fortress, the tremendous efforts that went into building it, and the seemingly impenetrable nature of its design, the Cloud People seemingly survived all the way up until the Spanish invasion, only succumbing to the introduction of smallpox, which the Spanish seemingly brought with them. An intriguing characteristic of these enigmatic people is the fact that they left no written language, yet adorned their site with countless stone carvings of orchids, butterflies, and jaguars. According to Warren Church, for more than 500 years, the Chachapoya cut farm terraces and villages into these steep slopes. This burial chamber, found deep within the site, shows that not only did they display great respect for their dead, but that they were of European origin white-skinned and blonde-haired, with Church apparently stating that the mummies are of the most beautiful past people he has ever witnessed. Were these mummies the remains of the original builders of this astonishing site? Or were they like the Incas, merely re-inhabitations, although how they got there to these Peruvian hills and controllers of Kulap itself remains a mystery? Yet white mummies of a seemingly European ancestry have been found throughout the globe, does this suggest that the ruling force we so often postulate once existed? That many known as the Atlanteans shared their knowledge across the globe before catastrophe? Regardless of their ethnicity, we find such research by church highly admirable and such discoveries highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, 
If you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. Chachapoyas is an ancient city, once effortlessly mingled among the mountains of northern Peru. At an elevation of 2,335 meters, it is still an inhabited location that was once the home of a little-known or indeed understood enigmatic civilization known as the Cloud People. Situated in the mountains far from the Peruvian coast, although this didn't apparently stop them somehow creating elaborate jewelry from seashells, Chachapoyas remains extremely isolated to this day. Only ever accessed by enthusiastic hikers, adventurers, and airlifted scientists, it is a site like many others we have covered which dot our planet, that, through our own research, has been revealed to have a contradictory explanation for their construction. Indeed, these sites are dated too, and subsequently tagged to convenient culprits. We have not only found compelling evidence to suggest that this most isolated, once thriving location is one of the oldest pre-Incan relics anywhere in Peru. But that the datings of such sites is often a funded conspiracy rather than a reality. Los Pinchudos is an elaborate Chachapoya tomb complex molded into a high rock face. It is a natural and cultural World Heritage Site and is guarded 365 days of the year and closed off to all except specific scientific exploration. What is remarkable about the site is the fact that the wooden statues marking the tombs have mysteriously survived the ages. These statues were used by academia to date the site. However, although the explanation for the statue's survival is apparently, quote, an arid climate, end quote, the actual site displays evidence of a far greater antiquity than these timber ghosts. Wooden artifacts rarely survive the humidity found within the Peruvian mountains, and although scientists attribute the figure's preservation to the site's location in an arid climate, the site, when discovered, was in such disrepair, an emergency conservation effort was launched to save it from further erosion. Many believe that the tombs would have been lost completely without church and Peruvian conservador Ricardo Morales Gamara, who restored the eroding foundations. The clay and stone tombs of the complex also have wooden roofs and have surviving Inca paint in red, yellow, black, and white. We feel, due to the other compelling evidence that has been gathered and subsequently shared upon our channel, Along with the extensive erosion found at many of the sites attributed to the Chachapoyas, that there may be a high chance that the wooden roofing and statues commemorating the graves may have been another conservation effort, performed by people placed more recently within history. People modern academia claim as the original builders. Is it possible that with the extensive erosion evident at the site, in contrast to the highly preserved and seemingly recent wooden monuments and protective roofing, that we are actually looking at more than two building phases upon these tombs? An original construction, followed by a later Incan conservation effort, and then a modern correction? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We recently covered the enigmatic ancient civilization that could once be found among the tops of the mountains within northern Peru. Known as the Chachapoyas, or Cloud People, they were a race of possible ancient giants that are said to have been responsible for some of the most precariously positioned and most amazingly constructed ancient builds to be found anywhere on Earth, let alone Peru. And the most astonishing of these has to be the ancient site known as Kulap. Kulap is a little academically shared, thus little known ancient Peruvian site, located within the Peruvian mountains near the towns of Maria and Tingo, in the southern part of the region of Amazonas. According to particularly funded parties, it was built by the Chachapoyas culture a mere 1400 years ago, on a ridge overlooking the Utcubamba Valley. 
However, once one has an opportunity to visually explore this untouched, once lost ruin, the unexplainable extent of the groundwork that went into creating the site becomes apparent. What first appears to be long brick-walled fortifications are soon realized to actually be enormous, seemingly unimaginably huge groundworks built by brick, creating multi-meter reinforced walls backfilled and leveled with earth, creating a ruin which is now what can only be seen as man-made geology. Groundworks the size of no other anywhere on earth, created apparently quite recently within history without any real record of the astonishing event, or more importantly, cataloging of the methods used found anywhere among the sites. The city has three entrances, two to the east and the other one to the west. The main entrance has a trapezoid shape, having once also having a corbel arch. This entrance was siege-proof due to its cunning shape. It becomes narrower and narrower until it allows the passage of only one person at a time. Astonishing architecture, built with precision into enormous constructions. There are over 550 structures within the fort nearly all of which having once been circular. On the southwestern part of the settlement, there is a 5.5 meters high structure known as El Tentero, or Templo Mayor, Spanish for main temple. Ceremonial archaeological remains have been found at this location, and it is hypothesized that the building may have been used as a solar observatory. Kulap was accidentally rediscovered in 1843, by Juan Chrysostomo Nieto, a judge from the city of Chachapoyas. In 1870, Antonio Reamonde made the first known survey of the site. Ever since, details regarding the site have slowly been revealed. Astonishing ruins. A place like many others around the globe, which also display seemingly impossible feats of engineering accompanied by complete lack of any recording or explanation for said tasks, undoubtedly predates its academic dating. The question is, who could have built such astonishing architecture atop the largest groundworks anywhere on Earth? How did they complete such a mammoth task at such a high altitude? Perhaps one day we will find out. Kulab, a site that I have previously covered and also personally expose the true scale of. Seemingly, or more than likely deliberately overlooked by academia, Kulap not only possesses an enormous ancient wall, which surrounds the entrance to the site, which according to academia, was seemingly placed upon the plateau of a naturally formed hill. However, after personally investigating this site myself, I found that not only had the wall constructed took unimaginable effort to build, but that the site beyond this impenetrable fortress had in fact been backfilled with earth, artificially creating the plateau that geologists, academics, and archaeologists alike long ignored and merely assumed was selected due to natural features, were in fact artificially created. However, it is clear for all to see that not only was the plateau painstakingly created to backfill to this fortress's wall, but the ingenious entrances were also the work of a people of tremendous intellect. Many of the passageways into the site allow many to enter the passages. However, as the invaders made their way along these elevations to penetrate the fortress itself, not only were they wide open to arrow fire from above from both sides, but also by design, the passageways slowly narrowed to a point where only one person at a time could actually enter the site. However, the purpose of this video is not the astonishing architectural features of the site itself, but possibly an exposure of the true creators of the site, a group of people with characteristics which may come as a shock to some and been long predicted by others. Found deep within a cave system within the site, a burial chamber at a depth of 800 meters, a burial chamber created at this location for the sole purpose of preserving these individuals' remains for as long as possible, and also to avoid the ravages tomb raiders that have been experienced over the eons by many of the other burial sites by many different cultures. 
There are many wooden idols that have seemingly been treated with lost technologies and have survived the climate astonishingly well. Yet, this set of mummies could expose once and for all who were responsible for this astonishing sight and indeed its miraculous characteristics. Thankfully, although much of the ancient tombs had been ravaged by robbers over the years, this absence of mummies didn't deter archaeologist Warren Church, who's worked for 19 years to save lost Pachudos and learn its secrets. Seemingly successfully unraveling its innermost protected secrets, and possibly coming face to face with its original builders, they were known as the Chachapoya, or the Cloud People by the Incas, who by this stage had re-inhabited the ancient pre-Incan ruins which dot Peru, and due to the ingenious nature of the fortress, the tremendous efforts that went into building it, and the seemingly impenetrable nature of its design, the Cloud People seemingly survived all the way up until the Spanish invasion, only succumbing to the introduction of smallpox, which the Spanish seemingly brought with them. An intriguing characteristic of these enigmatic people is the fact that they left no written language, yet adorned their site with countless stone carvings of orchids, butterflies, and jaguars. According to Warren Church, for more than 500 years, the Chachapoya cut farm terraces and villages into these steep slopes. This burial chamber, found deep within the site, shows that not only did they display great respect for their dead, but that they were of European origin, white-skinned and blonde-haired, with Church apparently stating that the mummies are of the most beautiful past people he has ever witnessed. Were these mummies the remains of the original builders of this astonishing site? Or were they like the Incas, merely re-inhabitations, although how they got there to these Peruvian hills and controllers of Kulap itself remains a mystery. Yet white mummies of a seemingly European ancestry have been found throughout the globe. Does this suggest that the ruling force we so often postulate once existed? That many known as the Atlanteans shared their knowledge across the globe before catastrophe? Regardless of their ethnicity, we find such research by Church highly admirable and such discoveries highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. Homes, towns, religious structures, an entire living infrastructure of a once highly successful, highly capable people. Managing to expertly fuse their existence harmoniously with the surrounding environment creating structures which left little, if any, impact on the surrounding landscape, structures still usable even to this day. Located within Abanque, a province in the region of Apurimac, Sehuite has been conveniently dated to the period of the Incan Empire, between the 15th and 16th centuries AD. However, like many sites dotted around Peru, and indeed the world, an explanation as to how these cultures achieve such wonders with such primitive access to construction or tools is not forthcoming. Compared to other Incan sites, Sehuite is also a complete ruin, leading the more observant, and indeed the free-thinking, self-funded geologist among us to suspect that it may actually be even older than the pre-Incas responsible for Machu Picchu. Yet the most noteworthy object at Sehuite, and the reason for our video, is its monolith. A mysterious boulder drenched in intricate, purposely placed carvings. Interestingly, the word Sehuite originated from the Quechua word Seweta, which translates as place of orientation. The site is located on the top of a terraced hill. Dedicated research has also revealed that the site was once home to an enclosed sanctuary. Yet all that remains of this sanctuary today is a few leveled platforms and the monolith. It contains more than 200 geometric and zoomorphic figures, including reptiles, frogs, felines, topographical hydraulic models, complete with terraces, ponds, rivers, tunnels, and irrigation channels. The functions or purposes of the stone are not academically known, yet others suspect it was a map of the once existing complex created by a culture able of moving tremendous weights and carving stone with relative ease. 
Researcher Dr. Arlen Andrews Sr. believes the monolith was used as a scale model to design, develop, test and document the water flow for public water projects, and to teach ancient engineers and technicians the concepts and practices required. Quote, the rock was edited several times with new material, either altering the paths of the water or adding routes altogether. End quote. Clearly a remarkable artifact left by a remarkable civilization. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.